Okay, so today we're looking at Preta. This is a VR action RPG that's pretty darn expensive, coming in at £27 or 35 bucks. Preta is 7 tenths Diablo, 2 tenths Grim Dawn, a tenth Dark Souls, and sadly, 100% cynical nasty pay to win bollocks. Though it looks like that may be changing. Will it be enough to save the fate of Preta? Now, I'm a big fan of hack and slashes. Diablo 2 was one of my main games growing up. I was pretty lame and was quite happy to do magic find runs until the secret cows came home. One time I even cried because somebody scammed me by switching out a Tau Rasher's guardianship for Rattle Cage. One of the most heinous things you can do to somebody. I was like 12 and my mum was all, oh surely there's something we can do. Poor naive mum. Anyways, I've played Diablo 2, 3, Grim Dawn, Torchlight. I love Titan Quest, you get the point. So my ears pricked up when I found out about Preta Vendetta Rising. The VR in Preta is something more along the lines of Kronos. This is a seated experience, you've got your wands which you can use like a controller, or ideally you could just use an Xbox controller. I'm a fan of seated games, and what I do late at night when I just want to kick back with a drink after a long day. So let's start with the visuals. It's fair to say, looking at Preta, that some of the character design and animation is pretty good. The actual character models are okay, with some decent visual flair across the few people you interact with, in the early game at least. The enemies also look quite good, though they're mostly golemy things so very blocky, and there's a general theme across the Pretas and the environment of ice and ice based attacks. If you look at little snippets in a vacuum, then it can look really good, with some cool enemy attacks and ethereal looking magic effects. The biggest problem however is that there's just not a lot to see. This lack of variety, combined with the generally uninspired aesthetic, creates a really shallow feel. Quickly the veneer will wear off and you'll realise that there just isn't much here for you. It doesn't look or feel very adventury. Across the missions I undertook, I went into mines, walked across some tundra, and spent most of my time in this weird sort of mountain, craggy, mining inspired area. I spent about 3 hours and almost all of it looked like this. Playing with two friends, not together but we'll get to that. We noticed there's a weird effect which made the world feel a bit off. It's almost as if we were toys. I think this is a side effect of the way the backdrop looms over you, but it also has to be a result of the atrocious level design. Just look at how wide and ugly this path is. It's unrealistic and lazy, and in VR, it just comes across as that extra bit unnatural. You come near me. You are in hell, but it's freezing here. Hmm? Everything is okay. The sounds are okay. You've got your main character who'll say some generic phrases occasionally, which felt a bit pointless. I played the mage, and it felt a lot like the voice actor was asked to do her best Annie from League of Legends impression. The similarities with Annie don't just end there, but if you've played League, you'll probably understand, and if you've not, good job. There's background music which I swear at points is incredibly similar in style to Diablo 2, with some similar twangy chords being strummed out. There is also a good mix of more modern influences in there. You'll occasionally go into rage mode, which has its own metal inspired theme. Whilst the sounds were fine, they didn't really match up with the tone and the gameplay. When it's a bit more modern and upbeat, you'd think it would be supported by more chaos and more energised gameplay. But it's not the case, and the darker, more Diablo-esque notes of the music and the people you talk to in town all gets washed away as soon as you get out into combat, and everything feels pretty bright and floaty, feels like you're playing with toys. The gameplay itself is a bit of a mix. It's definitely an action RPG at heart, but you've got a roll and a shield mechanic which are not usually present as always available skills in this type of game. That means that the combat is a bit more of a hybrid with games like Dark Souls or even something like Bayonetta. This could have translated into some really exciting gameplay, but unfortunately, Whilst it is fairly hard, and you might be wise to use your rolls and shield tactically on occasion, it's just not very fun. The enemies aren't fragile, and you are. So it's not hard from a mechanical point of view, you mostly just get hit by being greedy, but the enemy's life relative to yours just makes it artificially hard. To make things worse, you have a grand total of 4 attack types. 3 spells on a large cooldown, and a primary attack that you can rattle off at all times, and charge up to get some added damage. The spells were fine and it was cool that one of them was a dodging move in of itself, but I couldn't help but be disappointed with them. I didn't spend time with the other two characters, 
because you have to start again on each one, and I think you'll understand why I didn't want to do that. Rather than being in a giant, contiguous world like most action RPGs are, this one involves you going to a mission board and selecting a mission to conveniently teleport to. The missions are bland and you'll fight a lot of the same enemies. Whilst the bigger enemies have multiple attacks they can use, it's still a chore to fight them after the first few times. Even the small enemies take quite the beating, pushing you to use your spells with a long cooldown. The missions all involve you travelling down a linear path, then as soon as they want to do an indoor section, you'll be using a portal. Not much care was taken to make it feel like the portals are just in place of doors. No, these are just portals that take you somewhere else. As I said, this is coupled with incredibly repetitive combat, and you're not even able to make it less repetitive due to a bunch of terrible design choices. So the upgrade path all revolves around beating missions to get skill points. This isn't your standard fare where you get experience to upgrade, and in the early levels you find yourself levelling up rapidly and making some fun decisions about how you want to spec your character. No, in Preta you do missions to get your upgrade points. This means that your character progression is tied to completing story missions for the first time. The drop system is also tied to mission completion, so in addition to not levelling during a mission and acquiring a fun new spell, you also won't be getting some loot until the very end, and getting that will be tied to your performance. And it will be boring shit like materials to craft with, or a new recipe that you'll have to get materials to craft. Once you unlock the blacksmith, you can talk to him and he'll show you the resources you need to craft, which is basically just randomly rolling the stats of an item. And he'll show you which missions you have to replay to get those materials, so crafting is fundamentally tied to replaying the same levels again and again. A really bad decision. You can also send off companions to redo previous missions to get more resources. This not only makes absolutely zero sense from a canonical point of view, since these missions are discrete events that should only happen once, but it's also an incredibly shoddy way of limiting how far a player who just wants to progress can get, forcing you in one way or another to interact with the same content time and time again. I can confirm from playing through the first nine or so missions that I was repeatedly told that I was under spec'd. The implication there being to go back and play those levels again. Despite completing some missions with four or five stars, I was able to craft one item. A new staff, which apparently didn't increase my combat points very much. That said, I was able to keep playing the newer missions, but it forced my focus onto trying very hard not to get hit, which is surprisingly difficult when you're bored. I like hard games, I've played every Dark Souls, or maybe more appropriately Kronos. This isn't good difficulty at all. Honestly, I could talk at length about how awful the skill progression system is, as well as the loot system, as they've taken some of the most fun parts of games that are mechanically often pretty repetitive, and they fucked it up. They also fuck the combat up, it feels way too slow, and whilst the amount of spells and moves that are available at any one time might be similar to some action RPGs, the fact that you're basically unable to change your fundamental gameplay for each class is absolutely not the norm. The spell upgrades are things like increased duration or lower cooldown to ensure that you spend as much time as possible doing the same three things. If you're going to have three basic spells, you need to think more like the Mage's Tale, where you can change your fireball into three, make it bounce around, and give it some cool on-hit effects. On launch, you would not believe how cynical the microtransaction model was in Preta, the one that underpins pretty much every bad design choice they made in this shallow excuse for a game. I have to say that they are patching the system of microtransactions, but for posterity, here is how Preta was designed to be played. So I'm a lucky boy and I got the early access version. That came with a whopping $99 worth of in-game currency, which is a pack you can buy. So yes, the devs envisioned someone spending $100 to get a leg up. Before I get into this, let me just say I'm fine with microtransactions when they're either part of a free-to-play model like League of Legends, where you can get things that matter organically or buy it if you're in a rush, or when it's cosmetic stuff like Rocket League. I've spent a bunch of money on both of them, so they're good examples. Spending pretty serious cash on a game to then spend more because I'm going to be inconvenienced otherwise, that is a big no-no. So anyways, Dark Diamonds are the way that cool things are bought. So I started off with a shitload of Dark Diamonds. So say I want this costume, it's purple and it's creepy, it shows off my little girl character's midriff, that'll be 8,000 Dark Diamonds, thank you very much. So 8,000 Dark Diamonds is equal to 830 Diamonds, okay. So how much is 830 Diamonds? $10. This purple pedo armor costs $10. Okay, well that's cosmetic, 
And funnily enough, these items are what they're making now only attainable with real money. The other stuff is being changed to work with the in-game currency, which you can gather by playing. So let's see how the things you actually need were designed to work. So I want to make an earring. Well, obviously I will need some earring ore, earring essence, earring cloth, earring leather, earring extract, and a common earring tool. Obviously, I don't have enough resources, but I don't want to go and play those missions again. So, for 10,000 dark diamonds, I can get 10 kit to make me require half as much resource. Now, keep in mind these are all common resources. I'm sure there are more rare resources later on that you'll really want to use these kits for. But let's just say for now, I don't want to replay those levels. I don't want the burden of having to get four or five stars by either not taking damage or doing it quickly or whatever. So that's 10,000 dark diamonds for a minimum purchase of 10 kits. I want 10,000 dark diamonds then. It's a nice round number, but I can't buy that many. So I'm going to need an 8,300 and a 4,000. So that's 1,230 diamonds. So how much does that cost? 1,230 diamonds might seem like a weird number, but I can buy that amount exactly. That's 15 bucks, meaning that these kits cost more than a dollar each. So here we go. I've never upgraded an earring before, so this should be good. But wait, I forgot I need a common earring tool. So I'm going to buy that for 50 dark diamonds. Now I can use my kit, and what will I get for my troubles? 0 0.03 more evasion. Now, let's be fair, that's definitely statistically significant. If there's one thing I can say about that, it's that it's probably statistically significant. And don't forget, five more threat. And it's part of a set of fury, I guess, so there must be other parts to get more furious if I collect them all. Okay, let's make a weapon. What am I lacking? Weapon cloth. I can buy all the resources with my spare dark diamonds. I'll get all of these, then I can just refresh the page for free. Oh look, it costs more money to get another refresh. Oh well, it does it automatically at some point, but just so you know, you can spend money re-rolling the items that you can buy. I get my weapon cloth, and let's go and craft, using another one of my kits, which costs me more than a dollar. What improvements will I see from this? There you go, that's how crafting works in this game. Have fun getting all your legendary loot and killing crazy monsters. The spell upgrade system through runes is equally diabolical. It's centered around you buying runes with real cash randomly. Then when you don't get the ones you want, you can pound them into rune dust and use them to buy ones that you did want at a ratio of about eight purchase runes to one rune you want. So yeah, Preta is a steaming pile of shit and I will never recommend buying something from devs like this. They can fix it so that spending your money is not necessary, but you'll still be spending your time. They tried to reinvent the wheel and be greedy about it and failed. There is a multiplayer, currently only the raid mode. I got to do it twice before I ran out of raid keys and wasn't able to play anymore until I visited the dungeon. I couldn't find the dungeon, must be further in or require an update, but let's be clear, the raid system sucks nuts. You get to fight one of three bosses, you earn currency, which can get you items, and you have to use that same currency to unlock the harder difficulty modes for the same bosses. It's just stupid. Honestly, do not expect to have any fun with your friends. Don't buy it because you think it'll be more fun co-op. It doesn't matter how much they patch this game, or if they remove all of the pay to win shit. It's just not fun. It's massively overpriced. They've managed to take a format that works, and I still think could be fun in VR, and ruined it in pretty much every imaginable way. So stay away. Like, uh, I was playing before, and um, my girl died, and it's like kind of weird, because like she died, and then like, I like got an upskirt, and her butt is like so well defined, it's like, <laughs> she's like, it's like she's got the pants that go like right into, you know, all the way up. I'm thinking, I didn't, I am not sure that outfit for the little girl is like... I know, it's a bit weird, isn't it? I want to see the midriff. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see the fucking midriff. But like, she's super smart, so like, she's m totally mature for her age. She can choose, <laughs> she can choose spells. <laughs> <laughs> you coming hander you're right so that's all thanks for watching if you like this review then don't forget to like it subscribe if you want more and i'll see you next time